Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how you can install Helm and deploy applications to your Kubernetes cluster using it. Uh, we're going to be installing Prometheus, but this tutorial will work for any type of application that you're installing into Kubernetes using Helm. So this is going to be a practical video on how to use Helm, but if you want to understand the theory behind Helm, make sure to check out my previous video on what is Helm. All right, so the first thing to do when working with Helm is to actually install the Helm CLI utility. So by far the easiest way to install Helm is just using Homebrew. So I'm gonna do that here right now. And uh, it's just a brew install Helm. And this is gonna go ahead and find the latest version of Helm and install it. Now, if you don't have Homebrew, there's other ways of installing it. Uh, you can view their website. I'll have a link in the description below. And basically, you just uh, curl down the binary and move it to a location on your system that you have access to. Uh, once you have it installed, you'll want to do a Helm version and just verify that you have at least version 3 or above. I have version 3.9.3 here. Uh, if you have anything newer, that's going to work fine. Just be sure that you're not using Helm version 2 because Helm version 2 works quite a bit differently. And for this particular tutorial, it's guided toward Helm version 3. So once you have Helm installed, you can start deploying Kubernetes applications using it. Uh, the first thing you want to do is you need to find an actual package to use. And you find this through repositories. Um, so you can actually do this natively through the CLI, but it's usually easier just to go out to the internet and Google it. Uh, if you want to do it through the CLI, you just go a Helm search and then hub. And sorry if my uh, autocomplete history is a little distracting, but basically you just go Helm search hub and then the name of the application. So we'll search for Prometheus here. And oh, that's really large, so we'll fix that. I'll just run it again and basically you can see that it found a lot of different packages all on artifact hub so let's just uh, click on one of these and uh, this one isn't found so usually it's just better to search for it through here and just go Prometheus and uh, usually just look for the official one you can see this is the official Prometheus one and it's got 218 stars versus zero for the rest of them so we'll click here and uh, it actually gives you the instructions on how to do everything in here uh, the best thing I found is to click install here and you can see that it gives you the two commands that you need to actually install Prometheus so the first one is to add this repository and then to actually install the Helm chart. So I'm going to take these two and uh, just do them one at a time and give you a little bit more information on each of them. So I'll just take this one and uh, throw it in here. And basically it's just adding the repository for Prometheus Community. Now if we go Helm repo ls, we can see that I, <laughs> that I made a typo. So I'll put Helm repo ls. And you can see that our only repo is the Prometheus community. Now if we go Helm search, and not hub, but actual the actual repo Prometheus community, you can see all the packages available within this Prometheus community repository. And this is the specific one that we actually found on the website, Prometheus community slash Prometheus. All these other ones are for like node exporters, stuff like that. So you can install these later if you'd like. And to do that, you use the helm install command. And I'm just going to grab it off of here and I'll describe it really quickly here. So helm install to install your helm package. This right here is a unique name that you give to your helm release. So we'll get into looking at the releases and we're going to have multiple releases of this uh, helm package for Prometheus. But the one key takeaway here is this uh, needs to be unique and it can be whatever you want it to be. Uh, the next thing is uh, the repository slash uh, the actual Helm package name. So Prometheus community slash Prometheus. And then anything additional is just uh, the way to customize this deployment. So for this particular one, we're just specifying the version. Uh, you could put any version that was previously released and it would release that version. So let's go ahead and copy this, throw it in here. 
And you can see this gives us quite a bit of output here. And the key things to take away are at the very top. You can see uh, My Prometheus. So this is the release name that we gave it. It gives you when it was deployed, the namespace it was deployed to, the status, and the revision. And we'll get all into these as we look at the release and do multiple releases. But hopefully that makes sense for now. And this next thing here is uh, this is the notes and usually when you install a package it tells you exactly what you need to know to get started you can see at the very bottom here it tells you how to actually access the application by doing a port forward so we're going to do that in just a moment but first let's have a look at our kubernetes cluster to see all the resources that it actually deployed so you can do that with a cube control get all and this is a fresh kubernetes deployment using minikube so there wasn't anything on here before this deployment. And now you can see there's quite a few different things. Uh, so at the very top, it deployed about five different pods, uh, two for the alert manager, uh, this cube state metrics, the node exporter, the push gateway, and the actual Prometheus server. Uh, it deployed some services for all these pods, a daemon set, uh, here's the actual deployments, and then the replica sets. So you can see that Helm put in quite a bit of work to get this Prometheus application up and running. We're going to go ahead and access it in just one moment. I first want to show you uh, the actual Helm side of everything. So I'm going to clear the screen. And to see the actual Helm release is Helm LS. And I always add this extra flag for all namespaces. And this is because sometimes when you do an installation of a Helm package, it doesn't always do it to the default namespace. Sometimes it's either defaulted to a different namespace name, or you can specify one yourself. Uh, let's fix this output here. And you can see that it tells you everything about the actual release. And as we do more deployments, uh, this list is going to fill up with all our releases. And as we do upgrades, this revision number is going to tick up. But before we do that, let's go ahead and connect to Prometheus and just uh, make sure the application is actually working. Um, so if you don't have that output from your first install command, you can actually get it just by going, taking this release name, and going helm status and then uh, throw in the name and that'll pull everything up and I'm just going to take these two commands it gives me and actually this is for the push gateway I want the actual Prometheus server so we'll take these two commands And then I should be able to open this up in a browser now that it is forwarding my traffic to it. And there you go. You can see that Prometheus is up and running. And all we needed to do is run those two Helm commands. The first one to add the repository and the next one to actually install the Helm chart. All right, so let's get back into the CLI and I'll show you the real power of Helm. So I'm just going to cancel out of here. Let's clear the screen. Uh, and we'll go Helm LS all namespaces again. So you can see that we have this single release in the default namespace. What if we wanted to do a second release of Helm and uh, we didn't want in the default namespace, we wanted it in the dev namespace. Uh, so we could just rerun that command for the installation and uh, we could just change some parameters. So we could say namespace is dev and then make sure that this release name is unique. So we'll go dash dev and uh, run this. And by the way, if you run into any errors, you may need to do a cube control create namespace dev uh, just to make sure this namespace creates. But it looks like this came up correctly. And now if we go helm ls you can see that it just has that single release, but if you do the Helm LS all namespaces, we now have uh, one in the default namespace and one in the dev namespace. And uh, let me clear up my screen here and we'll pull this up again. Now let's do a couple things here. I wanna show you how you can actually uninstall Helm releases, how you can uh, 
upgrade helm releases and how you can do rollbacks so let's do these three things here let's say you didn't mean to put something in the default namespace and you want to just get rid of this one uh, you would do a helm uninstall so let's go helm uninstall and you can see I've done this before because my history comes up uh, I want to change it to just my Prometheus don't add a namespace here but one additional thing I want to add is this keep history command and if you add this keep history command it's going to allow you to roll back uh, if you ever want it reinstalled uh, so it's just a good practice to have this keep history parameter when you're uninstalling helm applications otherwise you won't be able to roll back so we'll go ahead and run that and now if we run the helm ls again you can see that it's not there but if we add this dash a parameter you can see it's there uh, but it's uninstalled now let's say that we want to update this dev but uh, we didn't want version 15.12.0 we wanted like 15.10 so all we need to do is go helm upgrade and then uh, let's take this and then let's uh, grab the rest of this command and uh, let's throw it in there like that and I probably don't need this extra garbage so let's take that out so it looks like I had it right I think uh, the reason that it's not working is I didn't add the namespace and of course you need two dashes there there we go that's how you do an upgrade it only took me a couple tries there but uh, we got that. Uh, let's throw the Helm LS all namespaces again. And you can see that uh, dev is now on revision 2. And uh, the Prometheus version is 15.10.0. Thanks for sticking with me on that one. Uh, I didn't have the command written down, so I had to do a bit of troubleshooting there. But let's go ahead, clear the screen for you. And uh, the next thing I want to show is how to roll back. So say uh, we didn't want to go to 15.10.0, we wanted to stick with 15.12.0. Uh, you could either do the upgrade again and switch it back, or you could do a rollback. So if we want to do a rollback on this one, uh, the best thing to do is to actually get a history of everything that's happened on this release. So if you do a helm history, throw in the release name, uh, and then actually specify the namespace this time. So dash n should work. Uh, you can see that there's two revisions of it. So this was the first one that has been superseded and this is the current state. And you can see exactly what happened here. It used the 15.12 chart here and then this is our 15.10. So if we wanted to roll back to the original revision all we would have to do is a helm rollback and then uh, put in the right release name here and then specify the actual revision so we want revision one and then again make sure that you're specifying the namespace and rollback was successful uh, if we rerun our history command we're on revision number three and you can see that it is the same as uh, revision number one. So we're back on 15.12.0. And again, if you do your Helm LS, it's going to show the same thing there. So that's basically the fundamentals of using Helm. I think those are the most important features that you guys are going to have to understand when you first get started. Uh, one thing that I'll mention is... Uh, if you are in Helm Hub and you are installing one of these packages, there's a lot of documentation on how to actually customize them. So I'll just scroll down here. And uh, another thing you can do here is it tells you the command. Uh, so this is a generic command. And basically, let's go ahead and run it actually. Throw it in. 
you can see that these are all the parameters that you can specify for this Helm chart. So if you take any of these and then uh, just make your own values.yaml file, put them in and customize them, you can specify it as a parameter and that's how you actually customize your Helm application. And if we go back to the documentation, you can see that it goes into that and it would, you would just run the command there. Now the values for this is gonna be different for every Helm application. So there's not a lot of value for me to show you how to do it here, but just be aware that it's all in the documentation. Now, if you're looking at how to make your own Helm charts for your own Kubernetes application, that's what I'm gonna get into in my next video. We're gonna take a Kubernetes native application, one that has a pretty simple manifest for a deployment service and config map. We're gonna take that and we're gonna turn it into a Helm chart and deploy it. So when that video is ready, I'm gonna post it in the description below and comments, so make sure to check it out. Anyways, thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.